Welcome to another Tuesdays with Teresa. I am Teresa Paul. I'm a silver executive leader with Avon and I sell at Rose Circle level. And I have been doing fundraising since about 2001, I want to say. So over 15 years, 2002 maybe it was. And um, one of my very first fundraisers was with our stuffed animals, our community outreach. It wasn't a lion, it was a bear. And um, was, a lot of you guys have heard the story about my bear I found, but I'm just going to tell you again what I did because this was huge. This was huge. I, I, um, my kids went to Catholic school and I was the walkathon chairman for our, um, our fundraiser. And what used to happen was the Orange County um, Catholic School, whatever it was, they had some kind of organization. And they used to do a walkathon up at the fairgrounds every year, and then they stopped doing that. So I said, how about if we do a walkathon um, at the school? And we raise money for technology, because now going back 15 years, um, 13, 14, 15, whatever it was, um, that's when the schools were all just starting to get computers and everything. And you know, it wasn't like the public schools where it was all part of the, um, the funding or the um, state aid or the school budget. So we did the walkathon for technology. And um, the kids would, you know, walk the school grounds every year and um, we would get donations for prizes from local businesses and everything. So I learned a lot from doing this about fundraising. So one of the things I'm going to tell you right now, because people always ask about, you know, prizes for fundraisers, we went around to all the local businesses and we got donations for pizza parties, for um, free ice cream, for french fries from Burger King, bowling passes, um, <clears throat> you know, toys from uh, the toy shops in town, um, movie, like just everything and anything you could think of from all the local surrounding communities and they would donate. So everyone that participated in the um, walkathon was entered into this drawing and then so not only did we do the walkathon we had a DJ and um, the kids walked the school grounds and they um, it was kind of a fun afternoon but they would raise anywhere from eight to ten thousand dollars just doing this and people would just donate the money the kids would walk the laps um, the like lower grades would bring in snacks the upper grades would bring in punch or you know soda or juice or whatever and um, napkins and plates and everything so it was like a really big fun thing that we used to do every fall well, the one year the school did, um, they were doing some uh, construction on the school. They were actually doing an addition on the building. And we couldn't do the walkathon because it wasn't safe to walk the school grounds. So I said, and this was, the, I just started learning that Avon had fundraising and that there was an option. And we had teddy bears that year. So I said, hmm, let's do a bearathon. And so I pitched this to the um, PTA, the homeschool, the principal, the homeschool association, whatever they called it. And um, they were kind of like, well, okay, so this is what we did. Each grade chose a charity that they were going to donate the bears to. It was a local charity. One that was a nursing home, the agribusiness, um, ABCD, agribusiness child development. Um, some was to, it was like a halfway house for... Um, for moms that were in rehab kind of thing, but they got to bring the children with them. So we, it was kind of a big thing. Each class did a little bit of research and decided who they were going to donate their bears to. So, and I put this big thermometer up on the wall. Our goal was, um, our goal was actually a thousand bears. I wanted, I can't remember how many kids were in the school, but if each kid got sponsors, and we call them sponsors, for three bears, then they were going to have a thousand bears, and that would be, I don't remember how much it was, um, $10,000, whatever the profit was. The, the, the pricing was all a little different back then. And at the time, I also challenged them. My hair was really long, like straight long down my butt. I could sit on it. And I was kind of known that like, oh, the mom with the long hair kind of thing. And so um, we did a lot of publicity on this. I had the local newspaper come out. We talked about the Barathon. And there was a picture of me holding my hair straight out. And um, 
And the challenge was if they did the, the um, thousand bears that I was going to cut my hair off and donate it to Locks of Love. We didn't do a thousand bears, so I did not cut my hair. Um, I did eventually cut it and donate it, but not then. Um, but we, it was a lot of publicity. We did a lot of thinking outside the box. So they did end up selling, um, getting sponsors for 500 bears. And um, I think, I can't remember how much money we raised, um, thousands of dollars. Um, it wasn't 5000 because I think at the time the bears were sixteen ninety nine and not nineteen ninety nine. dollars So um, anyway, that was my first experience. And so each cl the classes were all competing with each other. Um, who the class that, that got sponsors for the most bears was going to get a pizza party. The next class got um, brownies and ice cream party. The third place class got um, donuts and cider. So it wasn't a big expense for the prizes, but it was kind of a fun thing. And what was really cool was when all the 500 bears were, were um, delivered to me, it was all in these boxes and me and my girlfriend loaded them all up in our vans and we drove them over to the school and we had a little assembly at the school with all these boxes on the stage with the bears. And again, it was a photo op and we took pictures with the local newspaper and everything. So, um, so one of the things, this is kind of funny because one of the questions um, that was posted in the group was what are some of the mistakes that were made? And one of the mistakes that was made, and I don't know if it was a lack of communication on my part or that um, they didn't quite understand the whole concept because some of the teachers were a little freaked out when all these bears were sitting there and they were like, oh, we have to get those to the groups that we're donating them to? Yeah, so then they were like, oh, they had to contact the coordinator or the group that they, um, that they had gotten these bears for and get, make sure that the bears got delivered to the groups. So they were a little annoyed with me thinking that I was going to be going around the county and delivering all these bears for them. So that was one of the mistakes, but it wasn't a big problem. It wasn't a big deal. Everybody was really happy with the way it turned out um, and the money that was raised. So... Um, so that's one of the things you can do if you think really huge and you have a large group or a large school or whatever um, to do with Rory. So there's a lot of other different ways that you can do fundraising with him too. And one thing that I want to make perfectly clear, so that was my first experience with Avon fundraising. So some of the questions are, well, what if we don't know what we're doing or I want to be really confident in what I'm doing? I didn't know what I was doing. Did that stop me? No, we sold 500 bears. We, you don't need to have everything. The best laid plans are gonna go to hell because somebody's gonna screw it up. I, I had a fundraiser for a high school class, um, the senior class, 300 kids in the senior class. And I talked to the parent that's in charge of this, the organizer, and I take all these packets over to her. And a couple weeks later, I go to pick up the packets and she hands me like, I don't know, three packets. And my son was with me and, he was real impressed with um, my, lack, my, my, um, my control and the fact that I did not lose control <laughs> when I said, oh, is this it? And she said, yeah. I said, did they not get distributed? And she gave me back the packets, a lot of them too. I said, did they not get distributed? They didn't get handed out to the seniors? And she said, oh, we set up in the cafeteria at lunchtime and they were supposed to come to the table and pick up the packets. We're talking high school seniors. First of all, half of them aren't even going into the cafeteria. Second of all, they don't care. They're not, and if you did hand it to them, they probably flipped it in the garbage can on the way out of the room. What they should have done and what most of the schools do when I do a fundraiser with the school is the packets get distributed in home room and the students put them in their backpacks and they take them home to their parents. They don't expect them to pick them up at, um, at lunchtime. So, um, sorry about that. Um, so when you're doing a fundraiser, one of the things you need to discuss is the packet distribution to be sure that all the packets are given to the students. So um, yeah, that was another fundraising fail there. Um, and another fundraising fail, which really wasn't a fail, I had a group of cheerleaders, there were 15 cheerleaders, they sold $4,500 worth of product. They did amazing, but they told me, that um, the coach, told me that they were tax exempt. So we didn't charge sales tax. And when I delivered the products, and I said, I never did get those sales tax exempt um, 
Oh, no, not when I delivered the products, when I picked up the orders. I said, I never did get those sales tax exempt certificates from you. And she said, oh, we're not tax exempt. As she's handing me the orders, which we didn't collect sales tax on. So I said, ooh, that eight and a quarter percent is going to have to come out of your profits because we still have to pay Avon the sales tax on this. And she was not upset. She apologized because it really was her mistake. But, and it really wasn't a fail because they were so happy with their $4,500 that a couple campaigns later, they did the fundraiser again in campaign 25 and they sold another 2,500. So it, it's a learning process. And so while you guys are afraid of doing this and afraid of making mistakes and afraid of things that might go wrong, things went wrong with me. It happens, but we learn from it and we move forward. And I've never had a group mad at me because of the mistakes that we made. I mean, I had, again, uh, some, some uh, cheerleaders. I had taken 30 packets to the cheerleader coach. Two weeks later, I went back to pick up the packets on our scheduled day. And she said, oh, I think they're in my car still. I never did distribute them. Uh, my car broke down and it was at my boyfriend's house. And I'm like, can you give the packets out now? She's like, no, it's too late. You'll just, I said, well, can I at least have the packets back? Because, of course, what I do, and I ask all the groups to give me any leftover packets back because I put a label over the fundraising label because I use the full brochures. I put a label over it, a recruiting label over it, and I still put those books out. Nothing goes to waste. <laughs> I take the order books out of the packets and I reuse them for other fundraisers. So I do ask for them to um, give me back any packets that are left. So, um, so, so I see some questions coming through. Um, yeah, the cheer group did a full brochure fundraiser. Uh, if you guys could post any questions in the Facebook um, event page, it'll be easier for me to scroll through them in a few minutes to answer them instead of trying to do it um, on this live thing because I can hardly read those. Um, I'm blind here. You see that? Um, so, so the different ways that we can do this lion fundraiser. There's so many different things you can do with this. And Avon Fundraising had actually contacted me and said, can we, can we have like a condensed version of what this fundraiser is about? We want to put it up there on the website. And I said, no, if there's a condensed version, you're going to put a box around what the reps think they can do with this. And they're not going to think outside that box. There's so many different things that you can do with this, um, this lion and when I started telling her the different things that we do and that the representatives had done, she was kind of like, oh, okay. <laughs> so they didn't really, there's not like a condensed version of what to do with this because there is no condensed version. There's so many things that we can do to, um, to do this. Now, I see some of these questions. A lot of this is written, it is on youravon.com in the fundraising section. It's going to answer a lot of your questions if you read all that. So um, there's like charging tax on the fundraiser or no tax. That depends. Is the group tax exempt? Are they a 501c3 organization? Are they a school? Do they have a, a state sales tax exempt certificate? And if you read on the yourevon.com site, it tells you exactly what you need. If you're not sure, I'm going to tell you to call the fundraising hotline. It's 888-564-2866 because they will answer all your detailed questions on that. I don't want anyone to say, oh, Teresa said we needed blah, 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 and then have it screwed up and you didn't get your sales tax um, credited back or you were tax exempt and you weren't. So read the stuff at youravon.com and call the fundraising desk to answer those questions about whether or not the group is tax exempt and how to make sure that you get your sales tax credited back because you need all the right documentation and you have to fax it to the fundraising desk or email it and they will give you the information on where to fax it to and who to email it to. So, um, so the different things that you can do with this little character. First of all, right now he's not available online, okay? The number again is 888-564-2866. That's 888-564-2866. Write this down. Okay, so they are really extremely helpful there. They've always been wonderful there. So besides the Barathon, there's different things you can do. 
You can, and you can either choose to do this yourself, you can get your customers involved in helping you, you get a group or an organization involved. You can sell the lions outright, and the money, your 10, your 50%, your $10 that you make, you can donate to a group. You can say, I'm raising money for whatever it is you want to raise money for, whatever group you're involved in or whatever. A lot of times, um, you know, if, especially if you're sales tax exempt, you need to go to that organization and say, I would like to raise money for you guys. Are you tax exempt? Can we get um, the sales tax exempt um, information or, you know, that you need? Um, so different things you can do. You can sell him outright. People buy him. They give you $20. He costs 10. You have $10 left in your hand. That money you're donating to whatever charity you decided to raise money for. Or you can sell him and you can say, for each lion that you purchase, I will be purchasing an additional lion to be donated to the women's shelter, the children's hospital, the police department, whatever it is you want, whatever your cause is, okay? Um, the other thing you can do is you get, like I call them, getting sponsors, because that's an easy way for people to understand it. They're giving you $20, and so they're sponsoring this lion to be donated to whatever group you're working with. And then the $10 profits can also be donated to the group. Or sometimes people will do it, I'm raising money for, um, for a family member with cancer or somebody in the community, a child with cancer or whatever. And you can say, we're selling these lions, they're $20, and the proceeds from this will be donated to um, this child, whatever, little Johnny or whatever his name is. Um, you can do it that way. You can say, we're raising money for little Johnny. The lions are going to be donated to the children's hospital. The, little, the money is going to help little Johnny's medical expenses. You can do it that way. Um, you, can get, um, you can get groups or organizations. I had Girl Scouts, um, some Girl Scouts do this. They got people to sponsor the lions. They donated the lions to whatever group it was they were working, whatever they chose. And then they kept the money as their profits for whatever it was they needed they were raising money for at the time. So a lot of times the representative takes this on herself saying, I'm going to do a fundraiser. But if you don't have somebody that's going to be selling these or that's going to be helping you sell these, then you're kind of in the situation. Who are you asking? You're asking, you know, your, your, your circle of friends. But if you have a group or your customers or somebody else involved, then they're asking their circle of friends. You're going to sell more. You're going to make more for the group or whatever it is you're raising money for. So, um, what else can you do with this? Um, so, yeah, you, you can either do it yourself. You can get your customers involved. I've done it where my customers were involved. I actually printed out the flyers and the order forms. We were doing a puppy um, a few years ago. And I gave each customer one, and I was donating them to, um, what was I donating to that year? I think it was puppies. I think I was donating some of the money to the Humane Society, and the puppies were going to Toys for Tots or something like that. Um, so I had asked my customers to help me um, get orders for them, too. So that's another way you can do it. Just give them all a flyer. Say, this is what I'm doing. Can you get orders for me? Blah, blah, blah. Um, or you can go around to local businesses and say, we're donating these to whatever it is, your, your charity of choice, and the profits are also going to blah, blah, blah. And you can ask, there are some businesses that will have money set aside for this time of year where they do donations to local charities or whatever. And sometimes you'll get some businesses to cut you a check for $100 or $200 to go to the cause to help, um, to, to help purchase these. Another thing you can do, Lisa Wilbur, um, I got this idea from her, is she gets little colored cutout things, you know, that she prints out, and they can donate a dollar or whatever per little colored, you know, little cutout lion thing. So for each, you know, little thing they purchase, they donate a dollar. So she ends up collecting a lot of money and then purchases the lions and donates them that way. So these are like all the different ideas that you can use, and this is why when, when the fundraising department came to me and said, 
can we, can we, you know, kind of do a little consolidated version of what we can do with the community outreach? No, we can't do a consolidated version. I know some representatives that do this every year. Um, LJ Dalton does for her, I want to say the police department or the fire department. And they do publicity. They contact the local newspaper. They talk about it. Um, they get donations, some of the businesses, the customers. And every year when she donates the um, bears or the stuffed animal or whatever it is, they also do the publicity. There's pictures and they're in the local paper and everything as well. So um, those are a lot of the different things that you can do with this, with this fundraiser, with this community um, outreach. So the easiest way, um, I think, is to get a group or an organization involved so you're not doing all the work yourself. Now, if you can't get a group or organization involved, then by all means, don't let that stop you from doing the fundraiser, go ahead and do it yourself. Say, I'm going to donate this to that and that to that and put it out there. And don't just print a couple flyers and ask a few people. Put it out there, ask people to share it, ask your friends and family to share it. Put it in any, like the local diner, they'll like leave it on their counter um, with one of these. You could buy one as a demo or um, I think it's starting in campaign 20, we can order them. So if you order a couple and if you're doing this, um, in, in a business and you're, you're asking for the donations or whatever, see if you can put a little display up. What, look how cute he is. How can you say no to that? And he's a really good size too. I mean, I've got, I've got him in front of my fat head, but even if I put him up on my shoulder, he's still, his head's almost as big as mine. <laughs> so it's, I kind of look like him, don't I? Look at that little kind of golden mane thing going on there. Let's see what he looks like with my glasses. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> Do we look? Nah, we don't. Nah. Okay. So, um, anyway, I'm going to cut back over here to the um, event page on my computer because there were a lot of questions. And um, what did I do? I had it open. Um, okay, so there's a lot of questions here. Let me just refresh the page um, and see what kind of questions I'm going to try and answer here for you. Um, so, okay, so um, Lisa wants to know, um, she works full time and what's the best way to get packets to the organization? Is it okay to do most of the legwork by phone? I started out when I would try trying to do fundraising and everything, I would call the group and find out, or the organization and find out who is in charge of fundraising, who do I talk to? And then um, once I got the person's contact information, I would send them a packet or drop it off with the, inf the fundraising information and the fundraising flyers in it, and then follow up with them to discuss what was in the packet. And that follow-up is huge, huge, F-U, my favorite F word, follow-up. And I'm telling you that because those of you that have seen my videos and heard me talk about this, uh, one of my first fundraisers, I told you about the cheerleaders that sold $4,500. I had given the packet to the coach in June, and she said, okay, this sounds kind of a good idea. She's like, get back to me in a couple weeks. So a couple weeks later, I went back to her. I said, hey, Karen, how's it going? Did you have a chance to look at the fundraising stuff I left you? And Karen said, no, it's still on my desk, but give me a couple weeks. It's been really busy, um, and check, you know, come back to me. I said, okay. So a couple weeks later, I go back in and I said, hey, Karen, how's it going? Did you have a chance to look at the fundraising packet I left you? And she said, no, she said, but I really do. I really am interested. Just give me, give me some time. Check back with me. Don't. This went on all summer from June, July, August, September. <laughs> I'm like, all right, she's nuts or I'm nuts because I keep going back. Finally, I get a phone call. It's Karen. She says, oh, my God, when can we start? We're ready. I'm like, okay. Those are the cheerleaders that did $4,500, 15 cheerleaders. And then a couple campaigns later did another 2,500. So while I'm doing this, I was also trying to hook up with the Girl Scouts and hook up. I ended up doing four fundraisers. Um, it was like campaign, I wanna say 20 or 22 or something. Because all these feelers that I kept putting out and kept following up all came back at the same time and we're like, okay, we're ready. I'm like, okay, let's go. So um, by all means, yeah, do some phone calls, find out who you need to contact, um, drop the packets off and do the follow-up. Um, so 
what else? Let me look at some of these questions here um, that you guys posted. Um, somebody says, um, Marcella wants to feel confident with fundraising. I don't want to screw it up. What's the biggest mistake? So I told you about some of the biggest mistakes. Stop overthinking everything. Stop overanalyzing everything and stop talking yourself out of doing it because you're afraid you might screw it up. I just shared with you, I screwed a few things up. It happens. You know what? It, again, they still sold. They still made money. Um, it was a success and I still got fundraisers off of it. You're... The biggest way to screw it up is not to do it at all. Then, you, you know, I mean, I don't know. I get the feeling like you're, you're afraid. Don't be afraid to just do it. Um, you don't like trial and error, but you're not going to know unless you do it. And, you know, I learned a lot of stuff along the way. I was doing full brochure fundraisers, and I was giving them the order book, and they were writing the orders in, and... Um, you know, I learned along the way when I was entering the orders to have a highlighter with me. And if they ordered three glimmer sticks, I highlighted that quantity three. That reminded me to first look at the quantities when I was entering the orders. And when I was bagging the orders, that quantity was highlighted so that when I was bagging the orders, all three glimmer sticks got put in the orders. So little things like that I learned along the way because when I was finished bagging this uh, $4,000 order and there was a box of products left over and I'm like, oh great, and I had to go back through all those bags because back then was before we were doing the invoicing online and I didn't have the invoicing system that I use now and it was all done on the paper receipts. Now um, I have a different method of, of doing all that. It's starting to feel really warm in here. I turned the one air conditioner off across the room. So humid today and that storm's going on outside, but I closed, well, anyway, whatever. Um, so now I'm just sitting here being warm. Um, do I send out letters to places first, then follow up with a call and schedule an appointment? Do I cold call places? What's the most effective? Either or. I've done both. I've called and said, who's in charge of fundraising? Can I send you a packet? I also bulked ma bulk mailed 200 packets. But the problem, and this is another thing I learned, I was just going through the phone book, going through the, um, the newspapers, um, you know, dance studios, the um, the ladies' auxiliary at the firehouse. What I learned after I did all that was it was bulk mail. A lot of these places had PO boxes. They didn't have it. Their physical address wasn't their mailing address. And what I learned at the post office from my friends there is that um, because it was bulk mail and it wasn't return address or address correction or whatever the thing is that I put on them now that they ended up in the garbage. So a lot of these groups never even received them. But a lot of them did, and after, after I mailed the books out, and then I called and said, did you receive the packets that I sent? So that was a lot of work, and you know, I did get, I did get fundraisers out of it, but I learned that um, not their physical address wasn't always their mailing address. So you can mail, if you're gonna do mailings, but make sure that you have a correct address for them. Um, so what else here? Rochelle, I'm working up doing my first one. Like the lady above mentioned, afraid to mess up or not have all the materials needed or the answers to all the questions that they may have. I, then don't do it. I don't know what to tell you guys. I'm not making fun of you. But all I, all I see is everybody, like, try, you're, you're talking yourself out of doing this. You're talking yourself out of, out of a potential growth for your business and helping a, a group in the community. All the information you need is at youravon.com and the fundraising. There's pages of it. There's stuff you can print out. The presentation is there. The packets. The, the, um, there's, people were asking me about the, the graphic that I posted for this event in the, in the Facebook thing. That's one of the flyers that's there at youravon.com. Um, the thank you notes are there. The call scripts, if you're calling and, and, and asking for a fundraiser, there's call scripts there. Just change it to suit your needs. Um, so everything that you need, all the information is there. It talks about the sales tax. I have a couple videos I've already done about fundraising. I've got the Avon Reps fundraising Facebook group. So there's tons tons of information out there. You just have to kind of look for it. And I get people Facebook private messaging me constantly asking me questions about fundraising. And most 
I just send them to my videos because a lot of the questions they have are answered in the videos. And you guys are still asking me questions in this. I see questions coming up here. I can't read all this. You have to ask them in the Facebook group because if you're asking them under my live stream here, ask them in the, not the Facebook group, the event page, post it in the discussions on the event page. I can't read. I'll be like up here on this trying to read it as it's scrolling. So um, let me see what else we have here. Um, options to do a fundraiser with online order possibilities. So this is the deal. This is the deal. You guys, I have been bugging the crap out of Avon Corporate for online fundraising for years. Okay, and we had the online events a little bit. I want online fundraising and I want it now. And I want this guy on it. And I want all our fundraising flyers on it. And I want that we have a code or that we have a, I, I don't know, but they can figure something out that we can send the customers to our e-stores. They could shop. All the other, all the other um, direct sales companies have them. I can go to Tastefully Simple. I can shop a fundraiser. So I've discussed this. I've had face-to-face -face discussions with these people um, at corporate about this in detail, in detail. And I know that they're working on it. And I don't think we're going to have it for fourth quarter. We might have maybe, I don't know, but not, you know, it's not going to be, I, I, I'm not even saying we might have something because we might not. But what I can tell you is this. So every flyer that I hand out, every brochure, every packet that goes to a student that does fundraising, on my cover letter that is in that packet, it says, share this with your friends and family near and far. Um, they can go to my e-store and shop the full product line. What they have to do is send me their confirmation number for their order and let me know which school or group or organization they're fundraising for so I can make sure they get credit for it. And if you go to my e-store, yourayvon.com slash tpaul, my welcome message says, if you're shopping for a fundraiser, please send me your confirmation number and let me know what it's right there on my e-store. And I leave that up year round because I want anyone that goes to my e-store anytime, whether I'm doing a fundraiser or not, to know that I do fundraising. So that is how I tie in online fundraising with my local fundraising. Even if you're just doing the flyer and you're selling these, if they want to shop the full product line, they can. They can go to my e-store. They're not going to get the 50% earnings, but they'll get either, what is it, 20% or if you're President's Club, 40%. So there's, you know, when I tell them that, they can shop online, but you'll get whatever the earnings is. And I don't even keep any of the online earnings myself. Um, I give them the same whatever earnings I'm giving them for their fundraiser. Because of my sales level, I can do that. But I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to enter that order. I didn't have to bag that order. I did have to do a little bit of paperwork now because I have to keep track of those online orders. I have to keep track of what my earnings percentage was and I have to make sure that I give that money to the group. So when I get an online, fund, an online order that's for the fundraiser, I print it out. I write on the top of it what group it was for, if it's for the cheerleaders, if they say it was for Susie James, I write Susie James' number name on that. So it is a little bit of paperwork for me in that aspect, but I'm getting online sales. That group is selling more than they would have if they weren't doing it online as well. So that's my answer to the online fundraising. I just made it, I made it up myself. Okay, you guys, you're all really funny. Um... You're all really funny. Can you see us now? Smart asses. So, um, good thing I love y'all. Um, so, yeah, that's the online option right now. You have to be a little creative. You have to do a little more work. You have to put it out there. But it, it can work. It, it works for me. And I tell, like I said, I tell all my representatives um, to do that as well. So if you guys are doing that, Tie it in with your online store. Get the people, get your, your e-store out there. You know what? You get repeat sales from it, too. I have people still shopping online with me that I never met that were doing um, fundraising with me from years ago. Um, they do have the ability. There's, there's a whole lot more to it. After I've had the discussion with 
um, the IT department and with corporate, there's a lot more to it. There's, you know, again, with the 50% earnings or with what are e-store earnings on, how to track it, how to keep track of everything, what do we need to track it, how do they make sure the orders are linked to the representative. One of the other problems is, what if um, I'm doing a fundraiser, but one of your customers wants to support the fundraiser, she goes to shop my website, and it asks, do you want to change representatives? So in order for her to shop for me. So she could say, yes, I end up with your customer, not knowing that she has to change back. So one of the things that maybe we have to do is, um, do you want to change representatives? No, but I just want to shop with Teresa right now for this fundraiser. So there's a little problem with things like that too. It's not all as black and white as it seems, you guys. So give the guys a break. IT has a whole lot of other stuff they're working on right now, getting our, our <laughs> website stable and some other things that are coming for us and working on the, um, the, but there's a lot of stuff they're working on. Just know that, okay? So cut them a break, even though we want it right now. Um, that's the deal with that. Oh my gosh, I said this wasn't going to be a long call and look at all these questions here. Um, what if somebody, a group or organization has a person that, collects orders and the money and the person disappears with the money who's accountable for the orders and the money how do we we don't handle something like that if I got a group and somebody that that is part of that group is selling and they are collecting the money and they don't give it that's not up to me that's up to the group to deal with that's got nothing to do with me and I'm sure that happens with all sorts of stuff I mean I did have that happen with one of the schools um, one of the teachers said that she bought um, placed an order with one of the students and that order was never turned in that wasn't, had nothing to do with me. That had to do with the teacher and the student and the school. So I don't know how they resolved that. Um, not my problem. And I'm sure that happens with all sorts of fundraising things. It's just the nature of some of the people on our planet. Um, I've been trying to get the nerve up to make a presentation to a few organizations to set up a fundraiser, just like some of the others mentioned. Nervous that I may mess things up. Do, do, do. I just saw your picture in the What's New, and I've mentioned this before, but where did I get the giant checks? Oh, the giant checks. So that was, I was working with the fundraising department. I back and forth with them over the past few years. Um, and they wanted to do something in the What's New, and they were like, well, don't you have any, don't you have any pictures of you doing a fundraiser? I'm like, it's not as glamorous as it sounds. It's me slapping together all the packets and putting them out there. It's me bagging all the orders in my t-shirts and bralas with no makeup on and my hair in a ponytail. You know, it's not, there's nothing glamorous about me doing a fundraiser. She's like, well, what about, you know, the presentation? I'm like, the presentation, there's not a presentation. I give the stuff to the school, they give it out. So I said, okay, let me, I called the school. I said, um, can we get together? I made the check, I took it, it was a big piece of foam board. I just cut it out and had a ruler and drew lines and some of the graphics on it I just printed on the computer and uh, glue sticked it on there <laughs> and then I wrote it. So I made that myself. I did look, there are places that you can get sign shops to make them. I said, I'm not paying that much money for a sign shop to make it. And they couldn't have it ready for me for two weeks and um, and corporate wanted, they wanted that um, picture for the what's new right away. So I, we went down there. The kids were really good. The, the teacher, the staff and everything, they were really good about bringing the kids in. We, I did it on their lunch break. But, you know, just come on, let's pose for a picture here. Um, I would love to be able to attend the session this evening. Okay, but if there's a replay, um, same fears and questions. Going to do Rory. I fear I won't do it right. And... and feel like I screwed them. The money part is my biggest concern, the percent. How do I pay them the money earned? Well, that's, that's, so this is the thing. I, if the group is collecting the money and they're giving it to you, um, I, when I deliver the products, say, this is how much you owe me, and they give me the money. There are some groups that give me all the money, and then I say, when I deliver the products, here is your money. So that's up to you. How do you figure the percent? Well, you tell them, if you're doing Rory, he's 50% earnings, so you earn $10. You can give all the money to the group. I always give 40%, I keep 10% myself because I do all the um, flyers, the envelopes, I, everyone gets a brochure in their delivery bag, so the labels, everything else. So I, and I, 10% you know, barely covers my costs. But what I'm getting out of this is new customers, 
my name out there, more fundraisers. And I used to do this a lot because I liked selling at President's Council level so I could go on all those Avon trips. So I was a little bit of an Avon junkie. That was my reward at the end of the year, a, a trip, a tripaholic, <laughs> um, addicted to those Avon trips. Um, so that was my reward was at the end of the year, I was going to Hawaii or a cruise or whatever it was. Um, but so if you're keeping 10 percent, that's, you know, you have to to figure that out and you, uh, you know, agree with the group ahead of time. You're going to sell these, you're going to get 30% of whatever you sell. So for each one, um, not, so for each one that they sell 30% times 20 is $6. You would say, okay, for each one they sell, they get $6, you get $4. It's up to you in the group. You have to decide this ahead of time. Then you have to, if you don't know how to do the math, you better find somebody that can do the math with you. Have a student, a teacher, a husband, somebody, a friend, somebody like sit down and help me do this math because you don't want to screw that part up. Absolutely not. Um, how do you pay them the money's earned? You write them a check um, or they're giving you a check when you deliver the products. It's, it's, um, I know fundraisers are the way to make a quick customers, make PC and meet a cause. So I know you must register your organization through Avon. What comes first, getting a cause, then registering, then getting the materials? How do you present the materials to the fundraiser? Okay, honey, um, Blanca, Bianca, Blanca, I can't read, Blanca. Um, go to your Avon.com, Blanca, and um, <laughs> I see you. Go to your Avon.com, it walks you through all the steps. It's a lot of reading but it tells you everything that you need to do. You can't register a fundraiser if you don't have a group, you don't know the name of the group, you don't know what campaigns you're doing it, so you don't register a fundraiser first. You talk to a group, you present them with the information, the information is all there at yourayvon.com. If you need a video to walk you through it, find me on YouTube, Teresa Paul. Um, let's talk about fundraising. Let's talk about Avon fundraising, you'll find it. Um, one of the first one is getting the yes. The other one walks you through a fundraiser, but the getting the yes will walk you through the presentation and the materials and, and to finding the group. Um, so go find me on YouTube, Teresa Paul. Let's talk about fundraising, getting the yes. Um, and that'll walk you through the presentation and everything. Okay. Cause I don't want to, um, so Tony wants to know what does Avon get on Rory the lion? We pay Avon $10. We sell them for 20. We pay Avon 10. The other 10 is the profit. We split that with the group or we donate the whole thing to the group or however you want to do it. So it's all up to you how that works. But he's a 50% earnings item. So at, at 20 bucks, 10 for Avon, 10 for you. Um, the best way to approach your church, I'm a newer member. They're quite large, but they do a great group things. Help. What's the best way to approach them? Go again, look at the presentation material so you know what you're talking about. And there's some scripts in there so you have a little bit of an idea. But just go to, don't approach the whole church. Don't say, I want to do for the whole group. That Just the same way when you're going to a school. Don't approach the principal and say, you want to do the whole school. Start with the smaller groups, the smaller organizations, the youth group, the men's group, the women's group, the, you know, the same way with the schools, the senior class, the junior class, the freshman class, the band, the cheerleaders, the... There's a million different little groups in that school that need to, they all have their causes and they all need to raise money. Are there going to be any new flyers coming out? I believe there are supposed to be new flyers coming out. I'm saying this and I have not seen them yet and I have not been officially told the dates. So I do believe that there are supposed to be more flyers coming for the holidays. Um, I just don't know exactly what they are and when. Um, how do we successfully complete fundraisers for organizations out of town? Well, Miss Janae, so, okay, this is definitely not my half hour call <laughs> and I got to get off of here because I want to be on the gold leader and above call that's starting at eight o'clock because my, um, my downline representative, Miss Amy Webb, my superstar Amy in Texas is, um, going to be, um, on this call speaking, and I really want to be on it so I can be that proud mama of my downline representatives um, speaking on the call. So how do we successfully complete out of town fundraisers? This is the deal. And you guys kind of know this. Our, um, 
Our products, our fundraiser flyers that we earn 50% on are not available on our e-stores. So there's two things you can do. You can sell a fundraiser, you can send them the flyers, they can sell the fundraiser. What you do before you submit the order, and it takes a day or so to change your shipping address, so don't change the shipping address and then place the order, because the shipping address is not gonna change. You can temporarily change your shipping address. I have not done this, but I know representatives that have. And those products can be shipped to another state. There could be a potential problem with sales tax exempt because Avon charges us the sales tax based on where we live. So while I'm being charged New York state sales tax, I don't know that I can submit a New Jersey state sales tax exempt certificate because Avon's not paying New Jersey state sales tax, they're paying it to New York on my behalf. So you have to talk to fundraising about that if you're doing a tax exempt one in another state, because I don't know how that works on the financial back end. So you can, again, have the order shipped to the other location and then you change. Okay, I said I didn't do this. I take that back. I did do this once because I had the order delivered to the local school um, because they wanted it that way. They wanted the order delivered there. They wanted to have a part in helping bag it up and pack it up, which was the first and only time I ever did that. From now on, I was like, no, I'm bagging my own orders. They screwed it all up. Um, so it was, again, a full brochure, another one of my lessons learned. Um, the other thing is this. If you have back orders or something you know previously not available that you're waiting for, it could potentially end up pulling in the fundraiser order and shipping with your fundraising products and ending up going to that group too. So then the other thing is this, your paperwork is in that box. So you would have to also go paperless, change your shipping address, send it there, hope you didn't have any back orders going in and shipping there. So you can do it, you have to know who you're dealing with. Um, you know, again, you're gonna send, are they sending you the money first and then you're sending the products? You gotta make sure you're gonna get your money for those products. At least if it's local, you're a little bit more in control. What I also have done, and I did a fundraiser in California um, a few years back. It was a very small church. It was my niece's church group. I mailed her some brochures and I invited them all to shop online and to share the brochures and to share the website and whatever earnings they got, um, they all had to place the orders online. They could look at the brochures, they could share the brochures, but all the orders had to be placed online and paid for online so that the products all shipped directly to them. So I wasn't trying to figure out how to ship products to California. So that's what they did with that. And uh, then I just cut them a check for their profits and mailed that out there. Again, that fundraiser really wasn't any work for me. All I did was send them 10 packets. Um, and then, you know, other than keeping track when the orders came in. So a little bit of work, paperwork that way, but not entering the orders, bagging the orders, delivering the orders back and forth to the school, dropping off the packets, picking up the packets, doing. So there's a lot of work involved in a fundraiser. Doing the online stuff, it wasn't, you know, that involved. So I don't know if that helped you any, Janae. Um, you know, but that's, you have to be a little creative. You know, and, and people ask me about doing a fundraiser um, with a Facebook party, like a Facebook event and fundraisers. I have no idea. Never done a Facebook party. Never done. My Facebook events are are this, are me talking to you guys, my Tuesdays with Teresa's. Um, so, so Janae does Facebook fundraiser parties to avoid the complications, if any. So... Um, so, so what do you do, Janae, with your Facebook party? It's just like an event, and, and they show up there, and then they shop on your e-store. And you still, like, I'm still a little confused with that. And then you just cut them a check for the profits, right? Um, kind of the same thing, I guess, as me sending the books out there and telling them these are the brochures you're going to use, but all the orders have to be placed online. So that's the easiest way, in my opinion, to do a long distance fundraiser. Um, again, it's not the 50% earnings, but they're shopping from the full brochure. They're shopping for the full line of products and the products are all gonna be delivered to all the, the people participating. You know all the money's handled because it was all done through your website. 
So, um, so that's that. So anyway, it's almost um, eight o'clock, and I don't know if I lost everybody on my phone. If my phone died here, but I hope that that answered some of your questions about fundraising, and um. Okay, I'm looking at my notes too. I think that was everything I wanted to talk about. I feel like I talked way more than I wanted. So my main thing is, don't be afraid. Stop talking yourself out of being successful. Don't, if I can't do it 100%, I'm not gonna do it at all. Where did that get you? Where did that get you? Didn't get you any new customers, didn't get your sales up, didn't get the group any, like, that, that's just, I'm going to say this and I'm probably going to offend somebody. To me, that's almost a cop-out. Like, just do it. Get, plan as best you can. Start with a small group and do it. And don't be afraid to call the fundraising desk if you have questions about the tax exempt and about everything else that's available. There's a ton of information on youravon.com. And again, there's the Avon Reps fundraising group. There's a lot of reps in there that do fundraising that will answer questions and give ideas and share ideas as well. Um, I don't always get in that group every day to post. So, Tony, um, I know that we talked about this. I know that you've had a few questions back and forth with me, and I know that you really want to do a fundraiser. So look at Tony. I'm going to do a fundraiser this year. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do a fundraiser. Yes, you are, Tony. Yes, you are. You are going to do this. You've got this, okay? Um, so I'm going to kiss everybody goodnight. I'm going to put Mr. Rory down. I'm going to go... Um, move my computer back over there, put my headphones on and get on that gold leader call that's starting in five minutes. So thanks for joining me. I'm going to put up the replays later. I love you guys and I'll see you in two weeks. Bye.